Hi there and welcome to a new video in which I'm going to be showing you how you can create games in Godot easier and faster. And why would you be interested in this topic? Because if you're able to create games easier and faster, you're going to be able to make money, make more money or make more games in less time. So you're going to be saving time to do whatever you want. You're going to be making more money in less time. So it's basically a huge advantage that you may be able to have. And I'm not go. I am not going to be talking just about uh, case studies or whatever. I'm going to be talking from my own experience. I'm a game developer with more than four years of experience in this. I am a five-star freelancer on Fiverr. Okay, you can check out some of the reviews over here. I work for Semba, a programming and game development courses platform with more than 1 million learners and I have an amazing review from the CEO and founder of this amazing company. And I also have created prototypes for Voodoo, which is one of the biggest mobile game development companies right now. Three prototypes as an external studio and I also have my own uh, indie games, okay? So I'm going to be talking from facts, from things that work, from things that will actually um, allow you to make more in less time with less effort well maybe not less effort but less time that you have to put in so you will have more time to relax or to dedicate to other projects or whatever so let's get started because indeed here are all the ways that we are going to be talking about and we are going to be kind of like unlocking them as the video goes by so if you want to know all these keys on how to make more in less time you should stick until the end of the video so the first one that I want to share with you is basically have a clear game design before you start off creating. I know that sometimes when as soon as you start off a project, you want to get it done, you want to start off, you want to start adding stuff. That is completely OK. However, you do have to have a pretty clear idea on what you off, what you want to create. You you cannot ideate 100 percent exactly what you want to create because it's impossible and lots of things uh, change as you start creating the different features of the game. However, it's important for you to have, let's say, an action plan. So you can define pretty simple things, okay? So you can define, for example, your game over condition, your win condition, the game loop, and any kind of extra comments, okay? As well as some kind of reference to the type of game that you want to create. This can even be a reference from a game that already exists, or you can quickly draw something in paint or whatever and paste it there, or you can draw it in paper, take a photo and upload it to your PC. Quite simple. Um, so for example, in this kind of, in this uh, specific game design document, um, what I wanted to create is a, a game quite similar to Crossy Road. Okay, so I just um, broke down the different things that should be included. For example, the game over condition should be collecting with the car, win condition, crossing the road. The game loop, this means whether the game should have different levels or if the game is, for example, those casual games that have different levels and after the first 10 or 15 levels, they start looping. That is basically the game loop and any kind of extra comment that you may want to do. This is a pretty simple game design document for a pretty small project. Now, if you want to do something a little bit um, bigger, okay, in this case, uh, I, this was the game, okay, that I created and this was some kind of a game design document that I created and this has different sections. So, for example, uh, first of all, I have here the introduction and the introduction has an elevator pitch, which is basically a sentence or two describing uh, your game for example this is a this game is a 2d endless runner game in which the player can move around dodge obstacles and tries to survive it's like a summary of everything that goes down okay of every single part of the document but just summarized in one sentence then you can also define the genre of your game in this case it is a 2d endless runner uh, if you have a unique selling point okay what makes this different from other games and why you think making this project is it, worth it if you are just learning the engine and you don't plan to market this game, show it uh, or whatever, you can definitely skip it. But in this case, I, I also include, included it. Uh, and once again, a preview, okay, or a reference. It can be a video, a drawing, uh, or whatever. In this case, my preview uh, was the dinosaur game from Google Chrome, in this case. Now, for the core gameplay, you have some stuff that is quite similar to what we had before. For example, the win conditions and lose conditions. In this case, it was an endless game, remember? So there was actually no condition uh, to win. It was just infinite until the player collides with the car. The input or the controls, in this case, this will be controlled with W, A, S, and D, basically with the keyboard. And also, you can include here some rules and mechanics of the game. So, for example, the player has gravity and the player has to dodge these vehicles. Um, so once again, some stuff is repeated 
all the way around the document, but it is something that is going to happen and we allow you to have a clearer view of your own game. And then you can have some extra things such as some references as we have been talking about, if you have multiple ones, and once again, other mechanics or comments that in general you want to use. Do not take these things as, as just uh, as if they were written in stone. This is just a general structure that you can follow, but you can experiment with various ways, okay? Now let's go to the second point of five, which is basically the 80-20 rule. This, actually, this concept actually comes from an economist, okay, but it's applied to mostly anything in life. I don't want to get too philosophical, by the way. It's not necessary. Uh, but what, what this tells us is that the 80% of the outputs that we have in life, that we have in our game in this case, result from the 20% of inputs, okay? What does this mean? That in reality, success in a game or having created a game only comes from 20% of the actions or 20% of the things that we include in it. What this tells us, for example, or how you can interpret this, is that whether you are able to finish a game or not, whether the game is successful or not, is not going to be determined by either the game has great or not sound effects, either the particles are... Um, are completely fine or not, if all the animations look super perfectly fine, that's not what will define whether a game is successful or not, or whether you finish a project or not. It's actually going to be defined by other things. Is the core mechanic, the core of your game, clearer? Clear. Do you actually have a unique selling point? The core gameplay feels good, the controls work good, the win and lose conditions are correct, the mechanics that you, are in, that you have included are actually relevant to the game, all those things form this 20%, okay, that we are talking about. Because what this tells us is that f in our input, there it says input, is divided into, we have 20% of actions, which are important, okay, and thus lead us to creating a game. And there are another 80% of actions that are not maybe that important to create the game. So if we maybe don't focus so much on having a super polished project that has no errors and we start to try to um, fix 100% all the errors, yes, errors must be fixed in order to create a project, but you don't have to really, for the first version of the game, have everything perfect, working perfectly. You don't have to do it. You can completely delete this 80% of things that are not going to contribute to the success of the game or to having created the game. And with the energy, time and resources that you will save from this 80%, you can focus 100% on this 20%. I know it may have sound a little bit confusing, but make sure to read more about this, to read this uh, definition lots of times, and trust me, that is going to be completely worth it. Now, for the third point, improve your productivity have a system behind in which you can manage the different tasks that you have to do in order to create your game easier and faster. There are multiple tools that you can use or even combine uh, between them, okay, to be more productive. One of these one is, for example, Google Calendar, in which you can create, a, you can separate your day into different hours and say, okay, from 9 to 11, I will work on this project, then I will take a 20 minute break, then I will continue working for two hours. That's something that you can do. Uh, some other tools that I personally use is, for example, Notion, where, where I organize everything literally of my entire life. I will show you in a second about that. And another tools that I have seen that some people use and I have used for some clients are, for example, a ClickUp, okay, which is, let's say, similar to Notion, and Trello, which, let's say, that in general is, let's say, similar to, to Notion. Of course, each of these softwares have their pros and cons, okay? but do take the time to investigate in YouTube videos, even in courses, the different productivity tools that you can use, uh, because pro actually productivity is one of the biggest pillars when it comes to doing more in less time. Because in reality, this 80-20 rule is also like a productivity rule. So if you combine the 80-20 rule with having a good productivity system, you will indeed achieve doing more in less time. And indeed, you're going to be able to finish your project. And what also these tools will allow you to do is to break down the big task of creating a new game into the smaller tasks that you need to do in order to make this game a reality. Uh, so here you can say, okay, in order to start the game, what is the first thing that I have to do? Uh, I have to, I don't know, ideate, 
the project, okay, as I have showed you a second ago. Then you have to uh, think of a name of the project. Then I have to include the player. Then I have to include the obstacles. I don't know, I, this is just an example, of course. But sometimes uh, you can feel overwhelmed by, by saying, okay, I have to do this super big task, but in this kind of software, you can create a to-do list and say, okay, yes, firstly, I need to do this, then this, then this, then this. So it's much easier for you to organize and to get everything done. Plus these tools allow you to organize all the information in calendars, for example, so you can set deadlines for everything. So for example, here you can see your notion. I usually have here like my to-do list, for example, I actually have like a bigger daily planner with a much more complex system, but just for you to understand this. And also in reality, as you can see, if you go to, to templates, here you are going to be finding lots of templates. For example, here you have an advanced to-do list, you have lots of things. So by clicking just in here, for example, and uh, pressing here, add, well, this is actually going to take some time, but if you, if we can preview it, well, here you can see that, well, you have a task that have not been started, that are in progress, and tasks that, well, for example, here I would be able to see that they are done, okay? But it doesn't allow me to actually scroll uh, through the different sections. Um, so with this, you are able to have like a backlog of the different things um, that you have to do. So that at least for me is it means a lot. Now let's actually go to the fourth point, okay? Which is basically reading self-development and productivity books. This is actually an image from a, my book library. This is just a small portion of it, but I, in reality I have many more books. And there are like dozens of books that you can read on productivity, on getting more done, on even learning more and more practical examples of the 80-20 rule, okay, because from there I was able to learn about this. So right now there are doses of resources in terms of boosting your productivity and that will teach you how to create more games in less time. Uh, you have books, you have podcasts, you have a uh, shorter YouTube videos, you even have uh, TikToks, Instagram Reels, you have lots of resources, so really take advantage of them. And lastly, the last tip that I want to give you is to uh, track the different uh, uh, track the time that you are spending daily. There are dozens of apps to do this. I personally use one on my smartphone that is called Simple Time Tracker. I use it because it's very minimalistic, as you can see. So basically here you create the different activities that you usually do on a daily, weekly, monthly, or even a couple of times a year. And the idea is that you are able to track everything that you do. Of course, you don't track here if you are working and you take a two minute break to go to a bathroom. That's not the idea, okay? Uh, but the idea is that you start understanding a little bit more on what activities you are spending the most time on. And this will also allow you to once again identify which of those uh, activities that you do and on a daily basis are the most important ones, are the ones that are giving you the most uh, economical or in terms of game, if games finish results, okay? Um, because if you say, okay, I am spending too much time on, I don't know, this activity, okay? Uh, but I try to say, okay, yes, I am spending 10, uh, 10 hours a week on this activity. Then I can say, okay, are these 10 hours really worth it? Should I spend less time doing this, more time doing this? Uh, so that I can, maybe if I do less of this, I can do more of, uh, I don't know, this other activity, which does gives me a lot of results. Once again, this, uh, this is just an example. Uh, a lo lot of people, when I tell them this, they don't like it. They, they don't want to all the time that they change activity. Uh, they, they, they don't want to track it. But trust me, this is one of the habits that I've implemented in the past month. And this is one of the main habits, habits that has allowed me to achieve everything that I have achieved. And all these things together can really help you boost your game development creation, your income, everything, okay? So this can be applied to anything in life and in business in general. Uh, so I hope that you liked it and I hope we can see each other in the next one.